The subject of today's video was the son of an NFL legend, was one of the top high school quarterbacks in the class of 2020, and at one time was seen as both the future of LSU and Texas A&M, which are two elite SEC programs. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Max Johnson, the guy at one time seemingly had unlimited potential, and after a blazing start at LSU, he ended up falling off a bit and then also got benched at Texas A&M. So what happened to the guy? How did he go from one of the top high school quarterbacks in the country to now someone who's been benched at two SEC programs? Well, we're to take a look. We're to go through his insane rise, talk about his career, and talk about what could happen in the future. But before we get started, be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Max Johnson. Going back in time, Max's father Brad Johnson played at Florida State before having a long NFL career. There's a lot of football knowledge in the family as he won Super Bowl 37 as the starting quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Pictures from Brad's career covered the walls of their home. That was not the only football connection to Johnson's life as his uncle was actually Mark Richt. You probably know who that is as he spent 15 years as the head coach at Georgia and three as the head coach at Miami. Rick was actually the first person to ever offer a scholarship to Max and Johnson calls him Uncle Mark. This was definitely quite the legacy to grow up with, and Johnson said, quote, It's cool growing up with them, but it's also normal. They're just my uncle and just my dad. Those three are not the only big football names in the family, as his little brother Jake Johnson was also a huge deal and a four-star tight end in the class of 2022. Going back in time, Johnson first began playing football in first grade, but at first it was linebacker and not quarterback. He would eventually make the switch like his father and uncle did, and that's when Brad would start coaching his son in third grade. He noticed the ball popped out of Johnson's left hand. He noticed that, oh well, his son could throw the ball with his left hand. He was doing three, five, and seven step drawbacks and executed all those plays. Brad would end up retiring and then began doing film sessions in eighth grade. It became clear that Johnson might have the talent to play college football and it's what Max seemingly wanted to do. They eventually settled down in Georgia and he arrived at a Coney County High School and they would hire his dad, Brad, as the quarterback's coach. This would allow him to remain near his son and Johnson was a starting quarterback by the time his sophomore year rolled around. Crazy enough, the school was only eight miles away from the University of Georgia, so many wondered how the Bulldogs would factor into his, into his recruitment alongside the legacy schools of Miami and Florida State. By the middle of 2018, between his sophomore and junior year, he had a very impressive offer list that included offers from Michigan State, Ohio State, and even Texas A&M. One story in particular, though, was awesome. His dad said, quote, I had an SEC coach call me when he was a sophomore, and the coach said, quote, if Max will come down to camp, we'll give him an offer. I said, coach, he's not coming to your camp. If you really like him, you can come up here, and he's not out chasing offers. Some people would probably disapprove or disagree with that tactic, but I personally found it was pretty funny. His junior year ended up being a disaster. He only completed 39% of his passes and only had eight touchdowns and just over 1,000 yards. It was definitely a drop-off season, and many were starting to worry. Fans were wondering if this guy was overrated, and he would definitely need to improve his stock so his offer sheet wouldn't come crashing down. He was also given a chance to have a true fresh start, as many high schools offered for him to transfer. Well, the reason why his junior year was tough was because his top seven receivers were injured that year, and his school wasn't loaded with talent like many other schools were. He could have packed up and left, but he decided he was going to stay. His loyalty would end up paying off, as alongside his brother and his dad, Akani County won its region. The team finished with a 13-2 record, which was its greatest season in 15 years. They ended up losing in the title game, but the Johnson brothers were a huge deal, as Max threw for 2,142 yards and 30 touchdowns, and Jake caught 60 of those passes for 845 yards and 14 touchdowns. In terms of recruiting, he started getting big-time offers in ninth grade, but by the time November of 2018 came along, he was now ready to commit. Where would he end up going? And what was the main factor for Max? He said, quote, I'm looking for development as a quarterback and as a person, so it's not just about football for me. I do want to play in the NFL one day, but developing me as a person is just as important. He considered Florida State, Miami, Georgia, Wisconsin, and LSU, but would eventually sign with the Tigers. Why LSU? His dad said, quote, Johnson chose LSU because he felt comfortable there. He trusted Coach Orgeron's vision, and he connected with their offensive coordinator. He liked the atmosphere around campus, enjoyed Louisiana, and him and his family believed in LSU's system, and they liked the talent and skill positions. The last time an LSU quarterback went to his high school, it turned out pretty well for the Tigers. Zach Mettenberger was a big-time four-star recruit in the class of 2019, and after his brief stint at Georgia, he became the star at LSU, and maybe Max could be just like him. He was definitely a huge get, as he threw for 5,140 yards 
and 61 total touchdowns. According to 24-7 Sports, Johnson was a four-star recruit, the number 10 pro-style quarterback, and the 253rd best player in the class of 2020. So, how would he do at LSU? Well, let's take a look. When Max would arrive at LSU, Miles Brennan, Peter Parrish, and TJ Finley were already on the roster, but with Parrish suspended, Max had a real shot at the backup role. Little did he know, it would lead to so much more. After a hot start, Miles Brennan would get hurt against Mizzou, and this would now put the spotlight on Johnson and TJ Finley. For the South Carolina game, a true freshman was going to start. Orgeron apparently said he'd make the decision after Thursday's practice, and he'd sit down both Finley and Johnson and tell them that he believes in them and that they'll be fine. He was going to end up playing both quarterbacks and see what they could do. Johnson would play a little bit in that game, and then would appear in games against Auburn, Texas A&M, and Alabama. He'd make his first career start against number 6 Florida, and this game would come on the road. Apparently, Mark Rick didn't work that night, and this would end up paying off. Against Kyle Trask, Johnson threw for 239 yards and three touchdowns. He ended up leading them to a victory in the Swamp, and he helped pull off arguably the biggest upset of the college football season. And after the insane shoe toss, they ended up winning. Johnson went 2-0 as a starter in 2020, and with that potential and a new offensive coordinator, many expected Johnson's game to get even better in 2021. Going into the 2021 season, he would battle it out with both Garrett Nussmeyer and Miles Brennan, and he had high expectations. He said, quote, Last year was pretty tough for our team. We were 5-5, five and five, and we all didn't really expect that. It was a hard year for us, but we're going to bounce back. 2021 was an interesting season. In week one, he ended up throwing for 330 yards and three touchdowns against UCLA, but they ended up losing by 11 points. He threw three touchdowns against McNeese State, and then had five against Central Michigan before a huge game against Mississippi State. In that game, he'd end up throwing for nearly 300 yards and four touchdowns, and LSU was now 3-1, and one, and Johnson was one of the top statistical quarterbacks in the country. This was the peak of his entire career, and then things fell apart. He only had a touchdown in their loss against Auburn, struggled in a loss to Kentucky, before luckily having three touchdowns and an upset over Florida. They'd end up losing to Arkansas, Ole Miss, and Alabama in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games, before he'd finish the year with wins against Louisiana Monroe and Texas A&M. The Aggies game was pretty good, as he had over 300 yards and three touchdowns, but little did he know, that'd be his last game in an LSU uniform. He ended up finishing with 2,800 yards, 27 touchdowns, and six picks. Johnson was expected to be better in 2022, but he would not be there. Brian Kelly would be named the head coach, and he decided to bring in Jaden Daniels later, and five-star recruit Walker Howard was also coming in. I guess Johnson saw the writing on the wall and decided to enter the portal, and his brother flipped from LSU to Texas A&M. That is exactly where Max would end up going to, and he'd be put into a huge quarterback battle with Haynes Kane. Johnson would have a very interesting 2022 season. He didn't do much against Sam Houston State, and then led them to back-to-back -to -back top 15 wins over Miami and Arkansas. But his performances weren't great in either of those games, and he was definitely seen as more of a game manager. After a loss to Mississippi State, he would get injured and would miss the remainder of the season. This would allow for true freshman quarterback Connor Weigman to take over, and it looks like going into 2023, he is going to be the guy. Right now, Weigman has more potential than Max, has more buzz than Max, and is right now in the lead for the competition. While Jimbo Fisher says the quarterback race is tighter than it seems, I think that it's Weigman's job to lose, and Johnson is now becoming somewhat of an afterthought. His performances in 2022 were not great, and unless Weigman gets hurt or just plays absolutely awful, I think Max's time in an A&M uniform is probably coming to an end soon. Many are wondering, though, what is next for him? He was definitely a good starter in 2021 and showed potential of being a top five quarterback in the conference. He could probably start at a ton of different schools around the country and at minimum should get at least one more chance. I have no idea what will happen this season, but it does seem Weigman is the guy and Johnson's career may take another turn. Ultimately, injury and underperformance have ended up costing him, but I don't think his career is done yet, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. But what do you guys think? If you're an A&M or LSU fan, what do you think went wrong or what will happen to Max Johnson? What will he do next? And what quarterback or player should I take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all of the videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.